Happy New Year! I will add splashes to make it a bit diverse. My movements are quick. More on the shadows here. Wishing you a happy new year filled with boundless creativity, new artistic discoveries and endless inspiration. May this year be peaceful and bring us unique opportunities. And let's make this year a masterpiece together. Happy New Year! Made a photo and printed it out. So I can start before we discuss the materials. For the colors, I think you see that we need greens and also blue for the Christmas bow. For the greens, you can use any green you like, except one which is very, very bright, which is emerald green. So I wouldn't recommend to use viridian or emerald green, that's the same hue, very, very bright. But olive green, why not? Cobalt green, also a good one. If some of these you mix together with indigo, you will get very dark and very nice Christmas tree hue. So these will be my colors for the Christmas tree, for the Christmas tree branches. On some places I still see an uh, orange branch, so orange or brownish on these places. So I will edit a bit and these colors I will be using for the bow and indigo for the shadow on the bow. So this is lavender, ultramarine and indigo. These colors for the bow. You may ask why I'm holding in my hand also red color, which is called red from Alizarin. And I will say it to you, of course, if you mix these two, blue and deep red, you will get some purplish effect. And even if I don't see that on my Christmas bowl, I will still add this so that it's not pure blue. But also here, it's, it's more purple. That's why I'm adding alizarin. So you know the colors and for the brushes, a big brush to wet the paper. My normal brush, just synthetic brush that I'm using for almost everything that I paint. And this irregular brush from Chinese Wolf, I'm going to use for these needles effect. If you use a very thin brush and to paint each needle separately, it will take you so much time. But with this brush is much more easier because you get this impressionistic effect and you do not waste too much time painting each needle. I like this brush very much. There are smaller brushes like this, but the hair is the same. You can also try some different brushes to get this effect. For example, if you use a natural brush, this is Petit Gris. So it's from Squirrel. So if you hold it like this with your nails, with your fingers, you can also do it. So holding all the time to get this irregular shape. That's also possible. But in case you have a calligraphic brush, then it's much more easier. And I will start first with pencil drawing. I'm going to use 100 cotton paper. And the paper I love the most is Saunders Waterford. You can also see that it's 100 cotton and it's 300 gram and it's grain thin texture. You can also find different other brands, but it should be professional. 
and it should be 300 grams and 100 cotton. This gives you time to paint longer and the watercolor bleeds as you expect. So that's a question whether it should be a vertical or a horizontal orientation you choose. I think that I will use more like square. So like this. Like this. Yeah, I like this. And to make a ball a very perfect one, I'm going to use this. So it shouldn't be in the middle. I will make it more closer to this side and I will check that this is not the same as this. Yes, I have a perfect round. I can pour some wine. <laughs> and in the middle, I'm having this. This is oval. And some branch, which is here. I'm not doing any needles with a pencil, just the main branch. Like this. That's enough. So, one, two, so the, this, these two, one, two, and one is here. It's more like here, I think. That's it. I will start with the background and with the branches. And for that, I'm going to wet the paper from both sides. But from the front, everything should be wet except the Christmas ball. Otherwise, the color will bleed into my Christmas ball and I don't want that. So I turn it and will wet it from back. Big brush and clean water. Lots of moments. I always use 100 cotton paper and for now that's the same. Because this gives you time to paint longer. Just having more time to correct, to add different colors or hues. Now I will wet it again but not the ball. So coming around the ball. I'm leaving several millimeters, it's not a problem. 
but most of the background is wet and I'm doing that with pressure so that the paper sticks to the board Here around the bowl can be done with a smaller brush, it's also possible. So it's wet and now the time to mix the colors. I'm not starting painting now, I'm preparing the colors. So we agreed about olive green. And lavender so this is lavender olive green is here it can be also green gold so something very warm and for indigo I will make mixture here. This is pure indigo. Very intensive blue. You can also mix it yourself if you use any blue and, for example, paint a gray or even black. I see some bubble here. Again, making it wet. And now that's the time to remove all excessive water around. So here, just with the tablecloth, I'm removing. I will start with lavender no logic just absolute chaos and now this olive green it's very thick pigment, no water. And now my movements will follow the lines of the needles. So from up, right here. Also here, up and also down. Down are sm much smaller on this branch. This from left and from right. And some also in the middle. Some gaps in between are absolutely okay. With a smaller brush, I will come now closer to the ball so that there is no real gap in between.
I like when the brush has this irregular shape. So for that, I'm doing this pressure. And now using the cobalt grain. And also with this brush. And again, making the illusion of needles. Left, right. On some places, warm color is visible. On some, this new color. Left, right, left, right, and some in the middle. When the brush has again fine point with pressure, I make it irregular. I will add splashes to make it a bit diverse. With lavender, with cobalt. You remember about brown because on some places we see this brownish this brown this is burnt sienna in the middle not everywhere but it should be visible that there is something there and now I'm starting to add darker hues and darker hues are green with indigo. Yeah, so indigo. Indigo mixed with some green, it can be the same cobalt or other green, which is olive green, so you decide. And on some places, and I think, okay, here is light and here is shadow. I see it from the photo. So down this irregular shape, I'm making very thick paint illusion of needles like this also I see a bit of here but not up only here yes where else so here More darker here I see on the photo. Here is light, I'm not adding anything. Dark is around the ball, I see it. And I'm coming inside of this branch to create this negative painting. So coming around with darker color. And now with smaller brush, I will add very 
very dark edge of the background. As you can see on the photo that this place is rather dark. So coming around. And now I'm adding inside with lines to create the illusion of negative painting. That's how we create darker and lighter branches. So these are lighter and these are their beneath, so to say. Here also rather dark around. And also coming inside. On the all places where we see shadow and it's around the ball, I'm adding indigo. And pulling inside the branch to create this because it's not connected it shouldn't be like a, a um, circle around Some here. Also, this illusion of negative painting. clean brush I can move it a bit so it's visible but not that intensive how to work on wet paper so the paper takes pigment gradually and one moment you see that it's not enough that's why you add and add that's how it works you cannot do it just with one layer these are all several layers, but on wet paper. So shadow and here also shadow, then light and shadow behind. That's how we see this branch. Also the same here, down darker. several more dark on top but in general only down you have darker hues uh -huh. and also here a bit darker My movements are quick and it's very thick paint, that's important. So if I mix, I don't see any water in my palette. Everything is super thick. Negative painting also here.
and down also more dark clean dry brush a bit blending to create some more fluffy effects hmm not bad yeah what do you think clean dry brush the same i will take again olive green and cobalt green very thick making some more lines like for some fluffiness And now again indigo very thick and coming a bit inside to show more of these negative painting effects so that some needles are really really sharp. remember that watercolor when it dries it is becoming very light that's why gradual intensiveness should be added I will add more splashes with lavender. These splashes will be not that big because the paper is now not that wet. What do you think about adding white? For me, it's white gouache. I will take a bit. And we'll make white splashes. Now it's a good time to wait and when everything is ready, is dry, we can make the ball. Now we cannot do that because 
I'm going to do it on wet paper and if I do it now, what happens? Just the color of the background will bleed inside. I don't want that. That's why I'm going to wait. You can also use a hair dryer, of course. I prefer to wait so that the temperature, the high temperature of hair dryer doesn't influence on the color. And some colors are rather sensitive, like ultramarine blue. So I'm not a fan of hair dryer. On some places I will add darker and lighter needles, but when everything is dry. So for now I'm just stopping and waiting. It may take 30 minutes or something like that. My paper now is dry and now I can make the the bulb. The light comes, it's, it you see from the photo from the right side, but at the same time you see a bit of a shadow from the right so that you create contrast with this very light blue which is there and absolute shadow is here i would like to work on wet because with wet paper you can get this very smooth and very nice transfers from one color to another just my middle brush and water. I'm adding water only from front. It's not a big place. It means that it's possible to work just on wet paper from front. For big spots, it's better to wet from both sides. So it's wet and I'm starting with lavender here. I'm adding a bit of green to show that this green is also reflected. Adding more intensive color on the edge. You remember about the purple that I planned to use? That red mixed with blue. And it's here. I see it on the photo, so I'm not inventing something. You see this line there. And now intensive green and indigo for all other places. So very smooth transitions. Now there are no shadow, just the dark colors. And with thick indigo, I am starting to add in very deep shadows. First, under this silver part. And then pulling it there. I'm mixing indigo with some green that I used before so that 
the indigo color is not just pure one hue but there are different hues also this purplish or more lavender so coming very gradually to the colors I want and more intensive indigo here and my strokes are like small rounds you see so it's not like lines but more to show the shape I see also some reflection of the Christmas tree branches so I'm adding them I will mix now indigo's very intensive red and add in more of the shadows here. very dark hues but at the same time they are various so not just one color but more mixtures A bit lighter here clean dry brush just removing a bit so I don't want that it. it's like a border now I'm taking a bit of white and adding this white Great some diversity about that. Some highlights. dark color in the middle to show the white hanger lavender for upper part just on dry just as the illusion and some very light with vertical lines with a silver thing I will add more dark around the hanger so that you see that it's wide. Of 
What I want also to add is some light needles and there are also needles that come on that um, Christmas ball. I'm going to use white but for if I use just pure white this white will be yeah too obvious. So I will mix white with yellow. So my white will be very, very warm. And on some places I will add these strokes. Especially they're visible on dark. I will show you here. And also on top. Warm. So it's not white. You look on the photo and you see where you have this very light needles. And again, the paint is very thick. That's important. It shouldn't bleed. Perhaps some darker lines as well, also with a thin brush. I'm using not actually a thin brush, but this brush has so nice point. But also I love this one. So again, Indigo with this, you can add some of the needles. Not everywhere, just accidentally there.
some go on left some go on right or you can say also up and down but some are also in the middle that's why we see the fluffy effect So it's warm white, white with yellow. A bit of a dark shadow here. A bit of orange for the some warmish effect. And some lavender dots. I will now add splashes with white, just normal white, not warm white, but normal white. And let's call it done. And I wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year! I hope that your new year will be full of creativity and full of art!